I want to talk about some of what you've accomplished this year and over these four years. And I thought we'd start with China because that's been a priority for you as well as for the president. Give us your take on what has been done with China. Surely. Well, first of all, you have the phase one deal, which was announced a while ago, that largely deals with commercial side of things, deals with agriculture, deals with manufactured products, deals with energy. So that was a very good thing uh, to level the playing field a bit. There still remains phase two, which largely has to do with better market access, more respect for intellectual property, that kind of thing that is harder to quantify, but at least as important in the overall picture. Meanwhile, we have been struggling to combat the rising military threat of China, both industrial espionage, taking militarily insensitive products, technology into China, and most recently, we put 103 more companies on our list. That's a very big number. It's very precise in that these are the actual subsidiaries of big Chinese conglomerates that are part of the military establishment. We call them military end users. Prior to that, we had dealt with the issue of Huawei and ZTE uh, for their violations and for the 5G competition springing up between China and ourselves. And then in between, we did a lot of things about semiconductors. Most recently, SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing Industry Corp., the largest of the Chinese semiconductor manufacturers. And then on the other side of the equation, we're trying to encourage a more robust semiconductor ecosystem here in the United States. And that was authorized in the National Defense Authorization Act that just uh, went through. So those have been a few of the very dramatic things <clears throat> relating to China. In space, been... we have been extremely active as well. Yeah, I want to talk about space as well, but on the subject of China for a moment, it, it has been dramatic. There's no question about that. And one of the items of drama had been imposition of tariffs. Looking back over it now, has the imposition of tariffs had the affected result that you wanted as a practical matter, whether it's trade in goods like your phase one or more broadly? Do you think it's really made a difference in our trading with China, or is this setting the stage for something yet to come? Well, it's both. It, it has had accomplishment. The Chinese commitment, for example, to purchase agriculture is huge. And I believe it will turn out that this past year that's just ending will be the largest agricultural purchase year that China has ever had from the U.S. That's a very good thing because our farmers have been hurting. Remember, though, we have remained with tariffs on quite a lot of goods coming from China. And the major reason for that is to still have some trading room so that if we do get the kinds of concessions that are needed for the bigger issues, that we have something to give them uh, potentially in exchange. So I think it was a very well-balanced use of tariffs, pulling off tariffs on some in a reciprocal way as they lowered their tariff and non-tariff trade barriers to us, but leaving some in reserve so that we can get the rest of the way. Because we must solve the technology problem, that we must solve the industrial espionage, we must solve the stealing of secrets in various ways, and we must solve their efforts to become the dominant military power at our expense. 
And President Trump and you, I must say, have made that a priority, dealing with the industrial espionage, uh, some of the theft of intellectual property, things like that. Can you measure that and see where we've actually made a difference, or has it not kicked in yet? I mean, is there less of it today than there was four years ago? Well, they have passed some legislation uh, that moves a little bit in the right direction, but big issues like market access uh, still remain. So there is work to be done, and we knew that. Remember, this was not announced as a complete trade deal. This was announced as a phase one. So we and the Chinese both are well aware that there's much more to do, and hopefully that will happen in the coming period. Mr. Secretary, one of your priorities, we've talked about it before, is, uh, if I can put it this way, the commercialization of space, really the business yeah. of space. Give us a sense of where we are on that right now, what progress we've made, and what is the next step that needs to ta take place? Well, there's been tremendous progress made. Uh, remember, back in 2010-11, we launched zero rockets from the United States. Uh, President Obama had made arrangements for the Russians to launch the rockets, including the rockets that carry our astronauts to our space station, most recently charging us $85 million per ride. But in the 2010-11 period, some very wealthy people decided they were going to try to commercialize space. And the president has now ratified that with the new uh, space command on the military side and the other activities on the commercial side. He, the committee has delegated to Commerce a lot of the role for commercialization of space through our Office of Space Commerce. And I'm happy to say that the National Defense Authorization Act uh, has authorized a very big increase in the budget for the Office of Space Commerce. They've a little bit more than doubled it. And they also approved on an authorization basis the merger into that office of the current regulatory apparatus for remote sensing. The remote sensing is the looking down from satellites uh, for GPS purposes, for weather purposes, for all kinds of purposes. So those are two very important moves because they will ultimately, we think, lead to better space traffic awareness, better space situational awareness, and very much improved space traffic management. We're in the midst of a transition from the Air Force, which is not wanting to retain that function. They want to give it to us. And we're well along toward the transition where we will be responsible for communicating those factors that could lead to what they call conjunctions, what you and I would call collisions in outer space as thousands and thousands more objects whirl around in orbit at more than 10,000 miles an hour, posing great risk to our astronauts in the space station, posing great risk to hundreds of billions of dollars of capital investment, and potentially uh, interfering with communications to Earth. So space traffic management is going to become an increasingly important part of making space more commercial. The other part that's been helping it hugely has been reusability, the reusability right. of launch mechanisms, reusability right. of other parts, and one size right. fits all. That's bringing down the right. cost of space. So we're going to go from $450 billion right. space economy to a trillion. 
Mr. Secretary, I don't want to let you go without asking you about one subject. This is not really directly in your responsibility, but you are a senior official in the U.S. government, and that's this cyber attack reportedly from Russia. And I understand there's an ongoing investigation. We don't know exactly what happened. But can you give us a sense from inside the government of the priority being given to this, of figuring out exactly what happened, who did it, and what we need to do about it? What is being done? Well, there's a lot being done, but since it's a work in progress, I'm really not at liberty to discuss it. But I can assure you, it is a very top priority of the intelligence community, of Homeland Security, of the affected departments, and of the president and the vice president themselves. This is a very serious situation. Uh, it's a very widespread hacking and a very sophisticated one. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. Uh, one last short question. You mentioned the NDAA, that uh, Defense, Defense Authorization Act. Is there any question that the president will sign it? Because he suggested once he might veto it. Well, uh, that is obviously up to him. As you know, it passed both houses with overwhelming uh, bipartisan support. And so I, w I would hope that he would consider looking at it favorably. But he's the president. There's only one president at a time, and it's his decision yeah. what to do.